This is Mason Viner. Listen to the Young Terps podcast on CapitalSportsBlog.com and TerpTalk.com, the number one rated Maryland sports podcast. Good evening from Xfinity Center, where Maryland was terrific tonight. They beat Northwestern 70 to 52. I'm Wayne Viner. This is Mason Viner. Bruce is away from the microphone. Mason, what did you see tonight? A uh, really solid performance from a team that really gave it something tonight. Had some character, got down low, got mean. And Northwestern wasn't um, too far off from the mean. That, that was a really physical game down low. Got really, I don't want to say chippy, but it, there was definitely some something else going on. Yeah, there, there was some extracurricular activities as we run through our cliches here. This is the Viner Four Gates post-game show. The one thing that stood out for me is that Bruno Fernando in four years would be an all-time great at Maryland. The guy has the moves, he has the body, and you sit there, you watch him, and you think of the, Len Bias keeps coming to mind. Len wasn't exactly a center, but the body, the ability to go up in the air. When he pulled out a little bit right behind us and uh, made a jump shot, said, boy, if you can do that, you are gonna absolutely dominate. It's not enough that you have four double-doubles in a row yeah. and 13 double-doubles for the year. But man, he can, he can, he can play. He is fantastic. And one day you're going to look back and go, I saw Bruno Fernando when he played here at Maryland. Uh, talk about how Maryland handled themselves the second half without Cowan. I thought it was um, done very well. They pushed the tempo, ran through uh, more Ayella and more Cell a little bit up high. Wiggins definitely got some much needed time. I think Wiggins definitely comes to mind. If you talk about how they ran without Cowan, obviously they did it well. They moved the ball. They continued to run Mark Turgeon's offense, which worked very well in this game. But I think the biggest positive, and it's really not a positive that Cowan got those fouls, was the time that Wiggins got just in a normal lineup where he's not out there to shoot the three where you can just play. It just seemed like they were just playing. Right. They did. They, they played Defensively, you could say Maryland was great. We'll get to the stats, or that Northwestern just could not hit the ocean from the beach. <laughs> they missed shots in the lane. They were bad from three. Yeah, Maryland played some good defense, but man, Northwestern had a bad shooting night. And you look at the scoreboard at 70 52, it's one of those, it wasn't that close. No, there was a time in this game, and we'll get to the stats here, where Northwestern was 9 for 41 from the field, and I think it was 3 for um, 18 or 19 from deep. Right. And they it, was a, it was a real struggle. I mean, it, and you could see the frustration, and that really, it was when Maryland had really backed off, but if Maryland just kept on pounding them, Northwestern would have just kind of played their way into probably losing this game by 30 points. They certainly could have. Uh, before we go to break, there was a point in the game where he tweeted out Maryland had seven baskets and six turnovers. Once again, I think Maryland finishes with ten turnovers during the part of the game that was mm -hmm. still a game. So yeah. they went from five or six minutes in with six turnovers and then go the next 30 minutes of game time with only four. Once Maryland gets rolling, mm -hmm. they are hard to stop. Yeah, but you got to look at what's happening at the beginning of the game. and. Northwestern came out of the second half like Maryland usually starts off a game. They were slow. They were turning the ball over. They didn't look. There was just something wrong for Maryland in this game. It kind of helped to get inside a little bit earlier. And, you know, they're still turning the ball over. But when you looked at the game, it was just just those one or two plays different from their usual slow start that really helped them stay in this game and just keep playing throughout it. Uh, look, Maryland on Spider-Man night with all the snow. Maryland keeps the heat on in the second half. Rolls to a big victory. I'd like to thank Meyer Consulting Engineers and, of course, Viner Forgates. We will be back with the stats after this commercial message. Terp Talk is brought to you by Viner Forgates Consulting. Call Viner Forgates for all of your IT needs. In the D.C. Baltimore area, you could reach us at 301-251-2900 
or on the web at www.vinerforgates.com. Meyer Consulting Engineers. In the past five years, our organization has completed over 1,300 projects in the U.S. and abroad, including many structures at the University of Maryland. For structural engineering and materials testing and inspection, call Meyer Consulting Engineers. Back on the floor at Xfinity Center, I'm Wayne Viner. This is Mason Viner. Bruce is away from the camera this evening. The students showed up tonight. Did you like the red well, wall? Well, they were back from uh, the long, one of the longest ones, I think, in the country, Maryland winter break. Yeah, it was nice. It was definitely, it was oversold. They got um, a section from the fans, actually, tonight. It was it was just a, just a different atmosphere. There were a lot of empty seats, obviously, with the weather in the area tonight. But it's just still more intensive environment if the students are here more than if every other fan is here. Absolutely true. I, student wall is so much fun when it works. Uh, there are people there to run up and to run down with the flag today. Yeah. So uh, let's take a look at the Maryland scoreboard. Uh, 70 points. Of course, the big numbers come from Bruno Fernando, 9 of 16, 4 of 4 from the line, uh, 10 defensive rebounds, 2 assists. You know, the next biggest line is Smith. What'd you make of sticks tonight? Ooh, that's that's a rough question tonight. Again, more the down low. He's just not really there. He made some bad plays, and there were times in this game where you got to look at it and you got to say, is it every time they touch the ball, they force something up? It just. It seems. But at, that by way. the end of the game, he moved towards getting into the flow. Um, Jordan loves to talk about and text about during the games the flow, and Smith got into it by the end. He finishes five of ten. He's a plus minus. He's got a better plus minus than Fernando with plus twenty three. Maryland ends up with eleven total turnovers. I said a few minutes in they had six. 25 of 54 from the floor, 7 of 16 from three. If you shoot like this, 7 of 16 from three, you're going to win a lot of games. There's so it's the overall positive bounce back from yeah. the New York City trip. There's um, one more thing that I want to get to here, and you said 11 turnovers, and you mentioned the six that they had early in the game. When Maryland plays games like this and they get out, uh, I think we saw it against Illinois, to a 14, 15-point lead, Tonight, they controlled it. They didn't get sloppy. I mean, I don't know if it had anything to do with Cowan, who does characteristically at this point turn the ball over, stepping out of the game for a long period of time, but they controlled the game. They just kept they just kept it kind of deep into the shot clock, made a few of those jumpers late, and they missed some, but it's the ones that you make that really count when you have a lead like that. Sure. Cowan only with those 19 minutes. You mentioned the horrific Northwestern shooting. Once again, I'm not sure if it's the Maryland defense or Northwestern having an off night. 18 of 58 from the floor. That's 31 percent. Second half, 11 for 27. From three, overall, 5 of 23. They hit two of those late. So that'll do it for tonight's scoreboard. Uh, as you look ahead, you've got, and Don brought this up on the way over, you're at Wisconsin. Wisconsin's really picked it up. You're at Nebraska, and then it's all the way to February 12th, you're home against Purdue. Mm -hmm. You could win three. You actually can make a case that you could lose all three. What's your take on this now 8-3 and three Maryland Terrapin team? Uh, I gotta say I like them. Um, there was obviously there was a rough spot in these last two games, but the Nebraska game got a lot easier with Palmer going down for the season with an injury, which is really tough for them. That's really going to affect their season. But there's still two on the road, and there was a time where a lot of people were talking about how this team might be better on the road. I think that's kind of gone away. I think they've really gotten comfortable playing here in the Xfinity Center, but Pinnacle Bank Arena. Um, the Cole Center in Wisconsin, both of them tough places to play. It's going to be really telling for the rest of the season what happens in the, especially these next two games. Talk about the podcast for a minute as we get ready to go into the press conference. Yeah, Jordan and I will be on the Young Terps podcast tomorrow at some time to talk about, really break down the stat sheet from this game and really what we saw from a quite positive Maryland win. And you can give us a follow on Twitter at Young Terp One. Young Turp 1, and of course you can watch those podcasts on Capital Sports Blog 
and on our home at Terp Talk. Also tomorrow being Wednesday, uh, you could catch Bruce on Terp Talk at 6 p.m. on 1300 CBS Sports Radio in Baltimore. And I guess we're not going to do another one of these videos until February 12th, unless, unless we pop in for the lacrosse game. Who comes in? Is it Buck now? I think so. On Saturday, there's lacrosse. Uh, hopefully, it'll be warm enough that we want to go out there. For Mason Viner, I'm Wayne Viner. Enjoy your brief winter snowstorm. Maryland rolls 70 to 52 over Northwestern. Good evening from Xfinity Center.